Hello, I'm Harry, your host at Epistemi Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to scientists and entrepreneurs, a company that will change our lives for sure. Uh, today, I have the pleasure and the honor to receive uh, as, a, as a guest Dr. Mohamed Sumer Badin, PhD in computer science and PhD in law applied in science and technology. He is also the founder of the EU of Deaf Space Consultancy, right? Uh, a startup <laughs> founded in 2020 in Luxembourg. Uh, this company has also uh, invented a very interesting concept as a product, as a solution that is uh, the GG. PR reporting as a service and other also solution that uh, you will have uh, the opportunity to to show to explain. Us. How are you today? Oh, it's it's very good. Especially we are having very good weather. For that reason, I'm really <laughs> it's it's really, <laughs> it's really nice. Great, great, great. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's right. Could you please uh, explain us your your background and your your journey to, to the STEM science and law, of course, because you have studied both, both uh, fields at university, why STEM and what and why law? Okay, um, actually to start with, um, I think it is uh, because we, we are talking about entrepreneurship as well. So I think uh, we should uh, decide what education I have. I also should mention the, the characteristics that, that were developed. Uh, with the education that have led me to this uh, this place. So um, I did my bachelor in computer science. So at the core, I'm a computer scientist. Mm -hmm. And then I did my master's in uh, information technology. Uh, then I did my, another master's uh, in uh, policy analysis. Uh, and that is also from the technology perspective. And uh, that is the first time where um, I, I came across the thinking where you have to come out of the box uh, or, or behind the desk, and then you have to come in uh, front and you have to present or you have to analyze the opportunities and you have to see where is the problem and how you're going to solve the problem. So that, that was the first interaction I had uh, uh, with the market. Uh, when I was doing that, uh, um, uh, my, my trust developed in, in, uh, in the domain of innovation. Um, but not from the perspective of doing a business, but for more from the perspective of doing the projects. Uh, so uh, for that reason, I end up in the university where actually uh, we, I was uh, the lead in a project where we, are, we developed the first university-based science park. And uh, that was a very, very, very exciting project for me because there I see um, uh, my engineering skills, my policy analysis skills, and kind of an entrepreneurship environment that I was uh, at that time, I was really not very much into, uh, but then all these three merged together, then that is the environment of the science park where I saw everything happening. Um, when we were building the science park, there was, uh, uh, there was opportunity that uh, rather than having something established inside the, uh, uh, inside the university science park, uh, the ICT infrastructure, why not to get it from the cloud. Uh, so it is more cost effective. But at the same time, we realize that when the companies they're going to put their data, which is in the cloud, then they will face the security issue for the, in terms of, uh, in term, uh, for, the, for the data. So that is the first part where I come across to the legal part, uh, where uh, we open this chapter and we see how we are going to protect the data in cloud. And that have led me to the first PhD, which, which is about law and technology. And actually, I started that in Italy, in University of Bologna. And uh, there, uh, uh, we have this opportunity that we can define our PhD project itself. And if, if the team or the board like it, then uh, we can pursue the project. And I did that uh, in the same domain. Uh, and they like it. And so uh, then I continue with the, with the studies. Later on, I find out that um, the University of Bologna have the collaboration with the University of Luxembourg, where they're, uh, they're also interested in the similar domain, but from the very technical perspective, they, they were looking into how to uh, deal with the problem in which the cloud service providers, um, which actually, if they have some kind of a violation of uh, the agreement between their, with their client, uh, so far, there is no automated solution for that to find out find out if there is a violation. If you find out there is a violation, the the most interesting thing that you that happened to you is that you get a voucher for let's say Amazon, that you know you can use these free hours. 
Um, but what we were looking for, looking for is to provide a client a solution where he can monitor um, any uh, server and he can see where the violation is happening. So that is also kind of a legal perspective, but more from more from the AI and technical perspective. Um, and so this is another project I did with the University of Luxembourg, and this is how uh, I finished both of the PhD. So there is a there's a little bit of legal overlap between the two projects, uh, which make things very, very exciting. And actually uh, the collaboration between the two universities is more stronger. So that's that's the story. But this this all this when it was happening, um, uh, one of one of the very important thing that I realized about the personality that uh, 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 the changes in my personality or the way of thinking was the first time when I told you that when I did my policy analysis, I come in front of the table rather than behind the desk, which I've been doing in my computer science. Uh, then in this legal domain, I was having interaction with not only the tech technical people, but also the legal lawyers, which was, um, so for, for the computer scientists, it's always zero and one. <laughs> but for the for the lawyers, it is it's never zero one. It's everything between zero one. <laughs> so you can imagine it was really difficult for me to convince both of the parties together on one and bring them on a one platform. And that was one of the biggest challenge that I had. So uh, that bring a new perspective into my thinking and also become part of my personality where I have to, I have to come in front and I have to deal with this un uncertain situation. And uh, later on, of course, there are many events and many projects that I did where this this factor of uncertainty, which uh, um, those projects actually helped me to become uh, or to lead into the projects where they are more, more the projects or environment is more uncertain. So that that give me encouragement that uh, you know you can take this step, and uh, 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 that is the point where I start thinking of uh, how I'm going to establish my own company and uh, the fear of uh, uncertainty that was reduced through these projects so so that's uh, uh, th that took me till that point now coming to the uh, very specific part of the uh, of the company where i actually worked in gdpr domain is uh, um, we realized that there are uh, uh, you know the gdpr gdpr is there for almost two years more than two years uh, but still, if you ask people, they know the, the buzzwords, but actually uh, how to apply that is still a very big problem. And especially when you look at the, the chunk of the economy or the pie of the economy, 99% economy is driven by SMEs, small and medium enterprises. And these SMEs, they are struggling with their core procedures or core products or core services. So this supplementary process of GDPR, which is actually not the, the core of their business model, um, they don't focus on that too much. And uh, if they want to focus somehow on that, of, obviously they look for this, uh, they try to outsource this process. And for that, uh, uh, maybe if you're in Vilnius or Lithuania, or you're in a uh, little bit uh, less developed countries on Europe, you have to pay less. But if you're in Luxembourg, you have to pay, to pay a lot. And, and that is one of the problem. So we came, we thought like, why not to, uh, bring a solution where in a very cost effective way, uh, um, the SME especially who do not have a domain knowledge can, can create a report. So, so in a nutshell, I think you, 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 you will agree with me that, you know, when we are uh, doing some projects, we are very excited about those projects, but when we have to write those, the reports for those projects, it's not exciting. <laughs> and, and imagine the situation we are actually experts who are writing the reports. Now imagine the situation in which you are not an expert, but still you have to create a report for that. And that was the biggest challenge for us, how to sort out that challenge for SMEs. And that is what we did in, in this uh, uh, service we call GRASS. Uh, so if you have no knowledge of GDPR and um, you want to do, you want to create a report for GDPR, so you, uh, and you want to see uh, which clause or which articles of uh, the law you you are compliant with and which are which you are not, then we have this perfect solution for you. So that's that's the whole story. Uh, maybe we, before we continue a little bit, uh, could you please explain to the audience what is GDPR and the problem that you 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 are solving 
Uh, what happens if, if, a, if a SMO or startup or whatever big company doesn't comply completely to the GDPR? What happens to them in a legal uh, way or even as a technical problem? I don't know. Okay, so first let me explain what the GDPR is. So obviously it's a law. Uh, you have to be compliant with the law. So I, what I will do is I will list you the challenges, the applied challenges that, that are currently in the, uh, currently the, the organizations are facing, and that will also give you the complete definition of GDPR as well. Um, so in a nutshell, let's say you're a company and you're, uh, uh, you're processing a data uh, of EU citizens or residents. So EU citizens means the people who have a passport or EU residents are, are the people who are here for the long term to work on and they have a residence permit. In both cases, if you're processing their data, then you have to make sure that whatever is written in GDPR, the law, you should be compliant to that. And now there are two, uh, so, so this is the, the, the very, simple of say, uh, very simple way of saying it. Uh, but the first challenge is that every organization who have European people as employee have to be G compliant to GDPR because actually they are processing their data for salaries, for leaves, for HR purposes. So, so um, no, no company who is either dealing, either having employees or dealing with the European clients uh, is not exempted. In, in a very rare situation, there are exemptions, exemptions, but that is, as I said, is a very rare situation. So that's, that's the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge is um, normally you have seen that uh, the companies, they say, for example, in terms of information security, they say we are ISO certified. So ISO is a standard industry standard. If you fulfill all these requirements, there's a body who come do the audit and they perform the audit and they say that, okay, this company is ISO certified. Um, in case of GDPR, this is not the case. So you cannot say that my company is GDPR certified because GDPR is specifically addressing um, the process or the business activity in your organization that is using personal data. So that, for example, for, for salaries, you, you acquire the name, uh, address, uh, tax number of the, of the employee. So that salary is one processing activity that need to be GDPR compliant. If, you're, if other part of your organization is not using personal data, then you don't have to worry about that. And normally when, when someone asks us as, as a consultant, we say that, okay, uh, if you have four or five processing activities or business processes that are using processing uh, personal data, then you should go for the first one, which is the most important to your business model. Make sure that is business uh, GDPR compliant and then you can go to the next one. So that's, that's the, another challenge. The third most important challenge is uh, GDPR is divided into two parts. So it's have uh, um, one entity in GDPR is a data controller and one entity is a data processor. So the data controller is the big entity who, who say, I will collect the data and I will collect it for this purpose and whatever he decide uh, they will do with the data is the responsibility of the data controller. And most of the GDPR is actually addressing uh, data controller because law is all about putting liability on someone. <laughs> so they have to put the liability on someone. And so the data controller have the big liability. So most of the GDPR law is addressing controller and then the rest is smaller parties for the data processor. So you have to make sure whatever business activity you have, you are dealing it as a data controller or data processor. Because if you're dealing as a data controller, then of course you have a big headache. <laughs> you have to deal with the big part of the law. Uh, if you're dealing with data processor, if you're dealing that processing activity as a data processor, then you don't have to worry much. It's much simpler, but still it's a challenge. So these are the most important challenges that people don't know. And uh, that is the reason why they end up in mostly, mostly they end up in creating a policy. And they say, we have this GDPR policy and that is enough. No, law, you can never deal with the policy. So if, if my organization will say, I have this privacy policy and I'm complying to GDPR, that is wrong. So you have to, this law, in a law, you have to say that, okay, this article, I'm compliant for this, this reason, and this article, I'm compliant for this, this reason. So most probably you will see this is, a, this is something that is happening around a lot that the lawyers, mostly, uh, some of the lawyers, uh, mostly they create the policies 
Um, and uh, so that, that doesn't cost much to the company. And they give the impression that uh, your company is now GDPR compliant. So that's, these are the big issues. So I hope that answer your question. As I said in, in start, if you're processing a personal data of you sitting in a red residence, then you have to make sure you, you check everything in GDPR. And then these are the challenges that explain the nature of GDPR as well. If you allow me a question, uh, yeah, sure. uh, um, a, a pirate, uh, no, not a pirate, the pirate uh, with the with the <laughs> with the pirouette, um, no, with the word on, on the on the shoulder. Uh, what happens if a startup or a most of com or startup or a small company doesn't comply, you know, because they don't care of the GDPR? Uh, what happens if the um, if the lawmaker, the lawmaker, you know, catch you and say, "Hey, guys, you didn't comply." What happens to them? Is there any uh, strong punishment in Europe, or what happens to them? Uh, so, in the, in a law, um, as uh, in a most of the cases, what you have to do is you have to prove in a court, in a court of law, that this happened and this have affected me either physically or either financially. So. Let's say if the extent of that damage is small, then you will have a small uh, fine. So let's say maybe maybe 500 euro, that's all. But now recently, I think yesterday, the IKEA in France was fined a very big amount because they were monitoring their um, their employees without yeah, their- Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. So you can imagine, so that, that create a big damage. So uh, if one person complains something, uh, that's a small one, they will, they will give you a small fine, or maybe they will just give you. Uh, <clears throat> they they in a in a in a best scenario they guide you. They say, okay, look, this is this is not uh, creating a problem at this stage, but please don't do it. Uh, in a worst case scenario, you will get a very heavy, heavy fine. So there is a there is a specific law that say that how much uh, in a worst case scenario there should be a fine. Uh, that is a, a four percent of the revenue or. Uh, or profits, I think, and also uh, in, uh, there are there specific specifications as well. Uh, but as I said, three three things can happen. The first, of course, is uh, a fine. Either it's a big one or a small one. The indirect effect is you lose the reputation. That's that's in the market. So if if the news goes out that this company is not hand, handling a personal data and they got fined, then you can imagine that how it's going to affect your, your, your future business. And the third thing is they stop you from doing that activity. So now imagine my core business model of the company actually falls into that category. And this is what I've been doing using personal data. And somebody stops me. This means that they, are say, they simply say that, uh, sh close your shop. <laughs> So, so that's the worst scenario. Uh, with the scandal of uh, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, I think uh, yeah. it was the beginning of the, the you know, uh, how the, the American Senate uh, um, tried to catch Zuckerberg, you know, because of the Cambridge Analytica scandal, right now, am I, am I, am I right? Or was it completely uh, different problem? Actually, um, so we have a law, let's say we both are in Luxembourg and something happened in Luxembourg, it's, it's, it's okay. We have this court of law, they would deal with us. When the things go beyond the borders, then there is a problem because then you can, cannot simply say, um, let, let me give you a very simple example. So there's a, there's a person uh, who was uh, in his young age, uh, he, he was driving and he made the accident. So that that become part of the internet at that time. So, you know, the the small events become the big news at that time uh, because internet was new. So it's a old story. The that person later on become uh, the automotive driver, uh, automotive teacher. So it's like uh, you know he teach uh, how you can drive, um, and he was eligible to give uh, the license. Uh, uh, allow, uh, sorry, give the letter for the license, licenses, driving licenses. Um, but the problem is when the people search his name, the old news come on the top <laughs> and they say this person did the accident. So you can see the reputation. So what this person did is because it was coming on Google, most probably people are using Google. So he went to the Google and he said like, please, can you take this news off from this? And the Google said, no, we cannot take it. And then he took that uh, to the 
to the court uh, of justice, I think European Court of Justice, and he said, look, this is damaging my reputation and this personal data is no longer valid. Uh, the purpose at that time was to let the people know, like you should be careful, but now it's no use. So, the, so if you're keeping the data more than a purpose, that's against GDPR. So that's, they, they said, you have to take it down. But because of this cross-border, um, the, the different jur jurisdictions are involved, uh, it was difficult. They, they never did that. There was a huge uh, process and they, the, the case took longer, but they, they, didn't, they didn't do that. Uh, and that's that's the reason uh, uh, in your question, you know, it's it's simple when we have one country, but when it comes to the cross border uh, violation, just in the case of Cambridge Analytica, because the person who actually brought this case forward, he asked, uh, he he did the he did the case in the UK. UK have UK have a strong like Germany. You UK have also in addition to GDPR, they have additional law, so it's strong. Um, he, 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 he asked uh, the company Kermit and Analytica to give him all the data points they have. I think they, they said it's almost 6,000 data points they are collecting. So now imagine your name is one data point. Your blood group is one data point. 6,000. I, I, even I cannot tell you 6,000 things about myself. But they were collecting that data. So, But in the end, they didn't give the data to him. By law, by GDPR, they, they are obliged to, but they didn't give it because of the jurisdiction that was involved. So that's that's another level where we, you know, the uh, it's it's difficult uh, to execute the law. Great, great. Thanks for this uh, explanation. That's very very clear. Uh, now let's talk about a little bit about um, about your, your company and how uh, you designed your your service uh, because uh, the concept of the GDPR reporting as a service very interesting um, and very easy for for startup and similar, you know, to, to uh, because I see that you have a premium uh, version, so it's very easy for them to, you know, to, to check if your if your uh, everything is fine with you. And how how do you uh, design it, uh, the, the the service the solution? Uh, so there are two parts for this. There is a first part, of course, uh, to 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 put the blocks together, and the second part, of course, the service that you see that is happening and it is live not right now. So the first part was to bring the blocks together. Um, I'm 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 not European citizen, so I'm non-European. I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I have a I have a family. I have two children, small children. So here, I uh, challenge for me is not only to uh, to create the company and produce the product, but also uh, financially, I have to support my family. Sure. So for that reason, you see that currently I'm doing job in University of Luxembourg. Beside that, then. Um, when you have this exciting product. So I uh, let, let me put it this way. I started, sure, sure. I was started with the model of a space shuttle. <laughs> and I end up in creating a tricycle, you know, the cycle. Mm. <laughs> and that's what entrepreneurship teach you. That exactly, the MVP. Especially the people who come from the academics, they, because they, by, by default, they have to create the novel solutions, which are published, and that's their job. Now imagine that person come into the field in, in, the, in the industry where the industry is required a very simple solution that is understandable to even a technical expert or a non-technical person. So for me, uh, when, I, when, I have, when I have the idea, the two challenges was that I have this child, which was the space shuttle, and I love that child. But when the people came to, when I discuss it with, uh, with the experts in the industry, they said, no, no, no. So you can imagine that <laughs> I feel like <laughs> now it's it was it was not really encouraging, but that was the fact. Actually, they were helping me. It's it's to to bring that solution in more to applied way so that the industry can use it. That was the first challenge I learned, and I uh, successfully we finished and we did that. Second channel as challenge, as I said, it was the financial challenge where we um, I cannot employ many people. And I cannot do all the jobs together because already I have been working in university in Luxembourg where I've been doing many projects. So for that reason, what I did is I tried to look for, for, uh, for out of box solutions. And one solution I came across is that, okay, I, I, in Pakistan, I, um, I know a person for almost 
uh, 20 years, uh, no, 10 years. And uh, he's, he's having an IT company. So I asked him, can you give me a resource? Um, and that should be the resource on a time-based, uh, the expense should be time-based calculation. So if I'm using two hours in a day, then you should bill me for two hours only. And the level of the resource, of course. So that's that's the criteria. And, and that person gave me, um, he said, look, for you, I only have intern internees <laughs> because you cannot afford the senior, senior staff. I said, no problem. Give me that. Uh, what I will do is I don't need a project manager. Um, we work on an agile software development methodology. So I will be the product owner or a scrum master and I will take the team forward. So, so every day uh, when normally people are doing lunch uh, at 12, I have a meeting at 12 with them for 15 minutes. And we started with this project and uh, in the two years we finish and now they are the senior resource. They cost a lot, <laughs> but of course now they do job very fast. So that also squeeze uh, the budget from that part. So this is how I fin financially handle the thing. And the last uh, uh, thing, of course, uh, the challenge uh, was, uh, um, which I'm struggling right now because I am, I know law, I'm my core is computer scientist, but I'm not a salesman. So right now I'm learning this domain where people say that, okay, look, you have to go and you have to do this. You have to plan your strategy. You are late three months or four months in this domain. So that is the third challenge I have right now that I'm struggling with. And uh, um, now, now I'm starting learning. So every, every day is a learning uh, day for me. Uh, I have the project now. We are working with the, uh, with the, with the, with some clients and some, test clients. So that's that's the part where, where uh, the things, the new chapters are opening up for me. So to sum up, as I said, the, the first challenge was that I have a rocket which turned into the cycle. Second is the finance, how I'm going to manage everything and bring up the team um, that I can take forward with me. And the last, as I said, is now the part where the marketing, especially for the technical people or the people from the university, that's the biggest challenge because they are not the salesman. So that's that's uh, what what I'm learning right now. Uh, I have two questions. One is on the process. Uh, I'm a startup or I'm a uh, SME. SME. Uh, I submit uh, my company to your expertise to see if uh, my GT if I comply fully or partially to the GDPR. Uh, is it is it something that is 100% automated in, in IT, or, or is it something that you have to, to, to do it uh, as a person, you know, you, you have to check it yourself? Uh, so, so, uh, so let me introduce to, to the concept of what we are providing. Um, in any company, uh, normally there are two kinds of the reports. The one is the internal audit report and one is the external audit report. That goes wherever you have to be compliant or where ha you have to, uh, to prove that you ma match that standard. So that's a very typical situation. So if you're SME, then uh, uh, before you outsource something or before you, perform, you go for external audit, even a finance, you know, the, at, at, in June, you have to submit uh, your... Uh, 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 your tax returns in uh, in uh, in November. You have to submit your VAT returns. So there are two processes you will do. First, you will conduct uh, the uh, you will conduct the audit yourself or, or or employ your employee inside your organization. That is called the Type One report that you produce. That is only for your internal understanding that what we lack. When you and if you lack something, you try to do something about that, and then you go for the external audit. And that's the more where you, you get the stem that you're okay or not okay. So what we are doing is we, we are providing the solution for a type one. So you go into our service, you, you go and you provide a, a, lit, uh, a basic information. We ask in a pop-up uh, name of your company, the processing activity, which are using uh, the personal data. And then we move you to the next part where we ask you a very simple questions. These simple questions are, are in the same scenario uh, normally, uh, which is a traditional scenario that, for example, 
uh, you as a person go to the lawyer and uh, you tell the lawyer that I need to be compliant with this law. And the lawyer will never ask you all those technical questions of law. He will ask you very simple questions that you understand. But in the, in the mind, he will map your replies to, oh, he didn't match this article. He didn't match this article. Or this doesn't apply on him because he's doing this. He never asks you the complicated things. And in the end, he go back. And after a week, he come back and he give you the report. And suddenly, if you find out, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot this information was not right. I give you the wrong or, or, or something we misunderstood between each other. Uh, then you, again, the lawyer will go through all the questions which are related to that. And then uh, he update and he comes. So this is a kind of a three, four months process. And in the end, you have this internal, internal report. Here, I'm just giving you an example of a, a external lawyer, but most probably in the internal report, that will be your employer, you, you as yourself. Now imagine that if we do that for you, just in four hours. And only you have to do is you click, you answer. The, our software, our system, our smart system is mapping everything on the back, just like the mind of the lawyer. And he asks you the relevant next question. And if, if you say no, and all the, let's say five questions or all the next 10 articles are not related, he will not bother to bring you on a next question related to that. That's the same thing the lawyer is doing. And in the end, you just click preview and the report is generated in the, in the, in the format, international format that is for the type one that give, that, that explain to you why you're not compliant and also act as a guideline that what you're missing. So, so that's, that's what we are doing. And, and if you see that some of the answers is not what you're expecting, you can change and you can just click again. And in just seconds, not seconds, milliseconds, because on the click of a button, the report whole 35 pages or 40 or 60 pages report is generated. So that is what the convenience is. So we have replicated your meeting with the lawyer and the time that you spend and the number of exchanges in, online or physically that take you four to five months. We have reduced that into four months wow. and, and we, and, and, and sorry, four hours. And, uh, and of course the cost is super, super cheap <laughs> because it's a service. It's a very and last but not the least, the most important thing is uh, you can go into our service right now and you can create the report for free. One report for free, you can preview, you can edit, no, unlimited time, unlimited times for free, so you can see the value added that it brings. If it doesn't bring any value added, don't buy it, <laughs> because uh, the buying option comes in the last. You can preview the report as many times as you want. Uh, you can change the report as many many times as want. So, but this is actually what we want to bring in. Uh, we know how it is uh, difficult, especially in a COVID situation, for SMEs to to bear the expense. I hope that uh, explained the uh, Yes, but uh, very clear and very precious. Uh, congratulations for, for achieving this, uh, this, this solution. Okay. It's very, very interesting. And now I have a, maybe a, a bold question. As uh, you have a B2B uh, model, your yeah. client are startup and SME and even one day big company, or who knows. Uh, and you are offering a service-based uh, kind of task. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you need to to, to conduct uh, digital marketing operations, yeah. <laughs> launching Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads or, or I don't know. Uh, so you have to, to catch your audience, the, 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 the information system, the CTO of a company and catch him with, with an ad and yeah. bring him to your site and a landing page, whatever, and ask him to, to register his name, his yeah. first name, his name and, and his email. Do you comply with uh, with GDPR yourself? Uh, yes, that's uh, <laughs> at at, uh, at every point we uh, the moment. Uh, for example, I give you one example, the very 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 uh, basic example. So the moment you delete your account, uh, we make sure that everything is deleted. We from the backup server, from the front server, and we notify that even do, uh, before you you uh, you go and log in. Let's say you just ask us a question. In that, we notify you by the by the GDPR that we are compliant to GDPR. We keep everything in Europe. We have we are using Island Zone, and a, a Island have different zones for AWS. We are using that, and we 
uh, at the end, if you ask us to delete your data, we, we completely do that. And we try to actually, the whole <laughs> the, the thing we try to do is to collect the minimum possible data, private data uh, for, from you, from your side. Okay. So it's just a uh, bold question to you now to- No, 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 you're, you're welcome <laughs> to ask any question. You're welcome to ask any question. Uh, so by the way, concerning the marketing, the digital marketing, do you, do you plan to, to, to reach your, your clients with this kind of digital marketing? Uh, uh, because I, I think there are many, many uh, CTO and CEO in the, in the IT, uh, in, the, in the web, in the web uh, field that would be interested by your service uh, who are behind their computer, behind their, the LinkedIn, behind their Facebook or Twitter, or whatever. You can reach a lot of CEO and CTO uh, in the world, in, in Europe. Actually, um, once again, uh, so there, there are traditional ways of doing it. Uh, you need to have to spend money on that. Sure. And then there is non-traditional way which come up when you don't have a money. You have to think yeah. about that. <laughs> Just like that, uh, we are talking about a great service and, yeah. and sharing on YouTube. YouTube is yeah. thanks, thanks, thanks Google. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so my my plan is at this stage is um, uh, not uh, to some extent use the digital platforms to access the SMS, but majorly my my plan is to to establish a collaboration with the service providers. So let me give you an example. So let's say there is a, there is a platform, a public or a private uh, in terms of cloud or HPC, high performance computing. And uh, we know that many SMEs come to those platforms uh, to use the computing power. So rather than I go to those hundred and thousand of SMEs by somehow how about if I go to that service provider and I say, look, let's, col let's collaborate um, at this business model or cost model, which is suitable for you, for your clients. I can create an automatically a report uh, for your client when he can come to the platform, just giving a small piece of information, information using our platform. And, uh, you know, um, because you're a service provider, you fall into a category of data processor. And data processor by law and GDPR is obliged to provide the information related to the compliance of GDPR to their clients. So you, every time a client come to you, you have to create a report or you specific to the, what the client is using. Uh, that's, a, that's a hurdle. So you have to do it every time they ask you rather than we have this automated system and we can do it for you on this uh, specific business model of very cost effective way. So this will help service provider, this will help us, and this will help us to, to reach the SMEs in a way quick way. So that's more cost effective rather than, um, rather than I create the ads on LinkedIn uh, and I go, uh, um, which is also effective because I'm doing that. Uh, but as you see that uh, you have to find the ways where you think that the things can uh, cost less and you can get more benefit. So the, this is this is one approach. The second approach for us is, um, if you look at what we are doing, is actually we have um, we have this framework where we take a input from the user, and then specific uh, information, the questions, and then we create a document which is very specific to that uh, client. So this is what we are doing. The three steps. Um, some information, journal information, some very specific information, and then we create the document, which is actually uh, for that specific client. Underneath this framework, we have this uh, knowledge base of GDPR. So, and, and from that knowledge base, based on whatever the client uh, uh, replies are, we, we bring up the data and we put that data into the report. Now imagine if I remove this base, and I include another base from let's say logistics or supply chain or contracts uh, from, the, from another industry. Then I can use this same framework to create the other documents as well. So I can create um, contracts and I can create which are specific to, to the clients. And there, this is the second part that we are working on that we can expand into another sector of, of economies using the same framework. So that's, that's uh, how we are, we are marketing ourselves. Uh, we market from the digital platform saying that we are solution for SMEs uh, for the GDPR compliance type one reporting. Second, uh, uh, we are trying to approach the service providers so that we can 
access the cluster of SME very quickly. And the third is we try to scale into other sector of economies as well. When you say service provider, you, you, you mean uh, companies such as PrestaShop or, or Shopify or Skyping, you know, those, those platforms who offer um, uh, content management system for, the, for, for, for every, everyone who wants to launch a company online? Or do you, or do you mean something upper? in terms of uh, service providers? Um, so I give you one example. So let's say in University of Luxembourg, we have this HPC, HPC facility, high performance computing facility. That high performance computing facility, 20% of that facility can be used by the, by the SMEs uh, on the contract basis. But by law, the, by, by law the, uh, the, the HPC, in, in university, they they have to provide the information to these SMEs that they are compliant to GDPR. The report that they have to create is based on whatever the client is using. So that's a specific to that client, not journal report that you can share with everyone. Uh, this is one category. So we I call this service provider. Then, then you have um, the same category that you mentioned that other service provider, which actually by definition of uh, GDPR fall into as a data processor, uh, because the moment uh, you you use the data a little bit different, you become data controller. So that's that's a very specific definition that is given. So it's it's never the case that you will remain data processor. If you use the data um, in a in a in a in a purpose which is uh, uh, other than the purpose that is defined. And you process that data. Uh, other than that, then uh, you become a data controller. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's a different story. So when we go to the when when I say service provider, I have to make sure that that service provider act as a data processor, because if they are not they 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 appear to be as a service provider, but they are acting as a data controller rather than data processor, then we cannot provide. At at this stage, we cannot uh, approach them to to approach the cluster of SMEs because they are doing different job. Okay. So that's, that's why it's difficult to say. If you name something or name a company, it's difficult for me to say until we we go them we go there and we analyze their system and we say that you're acting as a data processor, so you you can be our potential test client or a client. So let's go and we can do this collaboration. So that's that's an important point. Okay, very clear. I totally understand. So uh, how do you see the future of uh, your company? Do you want to dig uh, the GDPR? Uh, Solution, uh, reporting a solution, or do you have also other uh, other uh, axes that you can you can develop around the law applied to IT? Um, <clears throat> we have solutions that uh, go more than GDPR, um, but but that depend upon the resources that we are available. So at this stage, we are consuming our resources at, at full. Uh, to provide the services and also the finance that I, uh, actually I'm, I'm self-financing this project. So for that reason, uh, I'm, I'm restricted by these criteria. But obviously, we, uh, there, there are some other products as, as well that we have in line. Uh, and, and the future of the plan is to work for them as well. And how do you see the evolution uh, of uh, the global law about the, about the data, the personal data? For example, the GDPR is very European thing. Is under the pressure from the United States and the Chinese uh, way of doing things about data. Do you think that uh, we will win in Europe? The GDPR will, will spread in the United States and China, or China and US are uh, stronger? Uh, so this this question have two parts. I will answer in two parts. So let's say about the contents of the law. So the contents of GDPR is the most extensive. So because uh, if if you uh, if you're interested, I can provide you, um, most probably it should be published right now, a, uh, a study in which uh, one of the uh, organizations, they have done the comparison between GDPR and other privacy laws in different, po in different part of the world. And they come across this conclusion that GDPR is the most extensive one. So if you, if you cover this one, you're covering everything in the world. So that's about the contents. But when you come to the level where we have uh, another political uh, uh, structure, then, then of course it depends um, how how the uh, um, how the agreements happen between the two countries, 
or, or to yeah Chinese uh, your uh, uh, EU and uh, US and EU. So if the agreements uh, hold together, uh, then most of uh, some of part some part will be easy uh, to to comply with. But at the end of the day, um, if the data comes to my country, for example, and my country have some laws which of course, uh, if I say they are about the protection or uh, about the human rights or fundamental rights of my, my people of that country, then of course, uh, that, that comes more at the upper level than whatever agreements I have with the other country. So you can imagine that uh, the arrangement is uh, it's, it's dependent on, uh, on the situation and on the context in the country. So that's why it's difficult to say politically either um, the agreements uh, make sure that your data is safer in the country or, or not. Perfect. Thank you very much. It was a very uh, interesting to, to hear your story and your, 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 about your, your venture. It's a very important uh, the personal data. We are, uh, I'm also working in the ER sector, so we know what that uh, personal data is something very, very uh, and you do a great job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're always welcome. And thank, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. See you. I wish you a nice afternoon, uh, nice evening. <laughs> thank you very much. You too. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. bye. bye.